there's a lot of progress being made in terms of AI, right? And AI could be a blessing and a curse because you'll have some people that will u- utilize it to their advantage of scamming people, whereas some will utilize your AI to actually help them detect scammers and fraudulent players. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Welcome back, everyone, to Stay in Your Lane. I'm your podcast host, John Maley, brought to you by Triple T Transport. And uh, we're, we're going to talk about uh, cargo theft uh, a little bit deeper and from a different perspective. Uh, first episode, we, we talked about understanding what's changed in cargo theft in the United States, for sure, uh, over the past five, 10 years. What, why does it look so different and what's attributed to, to it? And we came up with the tech impact is, has made some really positive gains uh, for people in our industry, but also left us uh, wide open for cybercrime and theft and and a lot of the uh, cyber attacks and a lot of uh, fraud based on uh, identity theft and impersonating other people. Uh, so that's led to uh, the, the phenomenal spike in numbers. This episode, I want to talk about one thing that Paul Jaroslawski brought up, which is AI. And I'd like to thank Paul for bringing that up because AI is going to change things in a way that we haven't seen, we can't account for. Uh, Everybody is uh, racing to figure out how to utilize it in any way possible over the past year or two. Uh, It's been around forever, but we've seen some major development in AI and implementation in our industry, which makes me concerned that we're going to open ourselves up for a lot more liability. Love to hear your thoughts uh, on this one. I want to go ahead and kick it off with Mr. Pruitt. John Pruitt from Nutribolt C4, uh, logistics manager. John, what do you think uh, AI is going to do from a theft perspective or a, a negative impact? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, it's not something we think about every day. Um, other than I wish I had a little bit of, uh, you know, something to do with AI to help me, uh, answer all my emails that come in every day. Um, but aside from that, you, you know, the uh, the situation with AI is really um, about you know right now I think the thought in transportation is that it's not going to replace people but it would assist people or help people um, some schools of thought in AI uh, and I think in that category when you're talking about how you can use AI to process mass amounts of data and um, you're looking for a predicted outcome uh, I think there's a great use for it but when you look at the negative side what if the wrong person, uh, such as these, uh, you know, individuals we've been talking about with cargo theft, who uh, I'm yet to uh, to find any, um, even when I do find my cargo, um, you know, what if they get a hold of it? And I think that's that's really the question. So when you ask me, you know, what do I think the negative could be? Um, I, I think the negative is if you get the wrong person who is able or has an ability to utilize AI to process those massive amounts of data, come up with those predicted outcomes, et cetera, et cetera, kind of all the bullet points when you talk about AI, um, then it's a scary thought because what happens um, when you look at the data on a load board, when you look at um, just the data available publicly, um, you know, and then you go next level and look at the data that has potentially been breached um, with hacking. and uh, the last point of that is you kind of wonder, you know, we've had um, carriers that have uh, been hacked systems down uh, this past year. Um, when you start thinking about if someone was able to harness AI for uh, with devious intent, um, what could they do? And you could probably write stories about what and probably a little bit of it uh, could be science fiction. Um, but when you look at where technology is going, it's not outside the realm of possibility that, um, you know, between data security and, and infrastructure concerns um, and, you know, again, hacking uh, activity that we've been witness to, um, what if? And I think that's really more about what's the negative side for me is it's more the what if and the unanswered question that we have around AI right now um, and what happens if the wrong person gets in that gets that level of control. Yeah, absolutely. I I don't know that I don't know that you're going to stop them from having it if they don't already have it. It's have they figured out how to use it in a negative manner. 
is maybe what our industry is waiting to see. Now, Thomas, I'm going to go to you on this one. And I hope you understand I'm, I'm going to you because it's a legal perspective. I think AI in our industry is wonderful for reviewing contracts between shippers and carriers. Some of those contracts are extensive and it's hard to find a lot of the loopholes. With AI software, are you utilizing it? Uh, so I don't use AI at all um, for legal things. I um, I grew up when Terminator 2 was really popular. <laughs> and uh, so I've always been wary of it. Um, but <laughs> I think it has its place, but it's wrong a lot. And it can be easily manipulated. And that's what's scary about it. It's not a person. So if you're able to manipulate AI to where, well, why are all these loads going to the same warehouse and they shouldn't be, and somehow you've tweaked the software or the, it's not the AI's job to notice that. It's just to say to go from A to B. It can be manipulated, I think, uh, too easily at this point, at least. There's not the security pieces in place. And also, it's it's quite frankly, it's wrong. So like, uh, you guys are familiar with chat GPT or whatever that uh, mm -hmm. AI. So a lot of like there's been lawyers that have been disbarred or had their law licenses suspended because they've had chat GPT write the brief, turned it in. And cases are just like made up. They never existed or they're wrong. And wow. so some jurisdictions have actually put out um guidance on it saying look we don't care if you use it but you better check it and there are certain areas of law where i i know you know i'm uh, i'm an expert you know I, I i really know what i'm talking about in them and so i tested chat gpt once um just to see like does it know as much as i know um you know I, as i get older i i don't want to have my job taken here um and it didn't and then it was wrong in a few places. And I thought wow. to myself, like, it it looked good enough, though, right? That, like, if you didn't know better, you would have totally said, oh, man, that's great. You know, this is, they didn't have to pay that lawyer. Um, but, like, if it were me on the other side, of you know, and I saw that, I'm like, oh, wrong, wrong. I'll get that. I'll get that. So it's, it can't replace the human element. I think there's, there may be, you know, there's a use for it. Um but again, I think it's it's too often wrong and it's it can be manipulated much more easily than a human being. Elizabeth, how do you see AI impacting everyone in your industry from your side? You know, I think we're we're already seeing it in some retail settings in terms of how they're engage, engaging with their customers and trying to figure out, you know, um, the products that they're putting on the shelves. But, you know everything that, that you and, and John and Thomas have talked about, you know, is um, I think the intent of, of AI really is that it's going to create efficiencies that otherwise might not be able to be there. Because I think one example I saw is, you know, if you have, you know, 200 ideas, all of those ideas can't become widgets um, potentially, but that with AI, more of those things maybe have the opportunity to get to a phase where then you bring in the human element to kind of figure out what those next steps are, but that AI can't necessarily um, take that idea to a widget on its own because, you know, to your point earlier, you don't have that human element to maybe check for the mistakes, check for where that um, didn't really meet the standards that we need it to meet. But just like with any technology, um, technology in the hands of a bad actor has the opportunity for nefarious activity. And, you know, I think that we've seen that in a lot of other, you know, fraudulent um, activities, whether it be gift card fraud or credit card fraud. And um, I think that um, unfortunately, AI comes with that double-edged sword as well um, of kind of where that goes. And so as we always are, we're trying to be a step ahead of where those bad actors are and making sure we have the tools in place to try to combat where um, they may be trying to use it to um, to hack into our systems. Um, you know, do we have that available to try to 
you know, interact that before it gets there. Um, I think it's interesting when you look at the trends uh, across the board over organized retail crime broadly, or if you're looking at cargo theft specifically, it seems that a lot of the um, kind of hot products being stolen track the market, right? So in the downturn of 2008, you had a shift to food and beverage. And in 2020, it was to household goods during the pandemic. And then in 2021, when we had sort of shortages in electronics, I think you saw some shift there. And now with um, sort of food prices higher and dealing with some inflation in the grocery side, you're seeing a shift back to some of the food and beverage. But, you know, does AI or are there things that help us anticipate trends you know, see things in the market, anticipate where, you know, we may see vulnerabilities in our systems um, that help us um, negate those types of activities as they come about. I agree. Trying to stay in front of it's going to be the, the game. And I think we're behind from a cargo theft perspective across the industry. I, I think everyone's adopted the technology and, you know, and worked that side of it as much as we can. And now we realize that we've We've left home base uncovered at some level, and we have to get back to changing the policies to prevent it. Now, Kathy, how about AI in the insurance industry? What are you seeing the impact from uh, any fraud or anything that you know that concerns or scares you? Well, certainly, I agree with Elizabeth that uh, you know AI is a double-edged sword, no doubt. Um, you know some. Some positives um, of AI, you know, on the carrier side is that, you know, carriers adopting um, AI solutions can help maintain the security and integrity of the supply chain. Um, predictive analysis, you know, they can identify problematic routes. Um, they can try to use real-time analytics to avoid theft before it happens. Um, so from an insurance perspective in the future, you know, there certainly could be, you know, underwriters that look more favorably at property brokers who use, um, you know, partners that, that use AI. Um, but, on, you know, like we'd all said on the flip side, the bad actors are using the same technology to, you know, to power their malicious attacks, um, phishing and, and ransomware, um, you know, to make their attacks more effective. So, you know, just essentially, um, it's a game of cat and mouse, right? And we all need to stay vigilant where while we see where AI goes. Wow. Yeah, different perspective. I wasn't thinking that uh, you know it could be used in a proactive manner from the, that's a proactive approach i didn't see ai being you know i personally didn't look at it that way but um thank you all very very much for participating for sharing you know what your visions are what you've dealt with uh solutions uh processes and and i would be remiss if i didn't give another shout out to our our two uh um, Gentlemen out the Highway Patrol in Los Angeles, San Bernardino, uh, Alfredo Chen and Gil Gasco, who are every day fighting the fight and trying to keep up with the volume of cargo thefts happening in Southern California, for example, at more than 10 a day. So uh, I want to give them a shout out. I'm also going to attach their contact information for everyone here uh to uh, communicate with in the future to reach out to if you if you have a need these gentlemen are are truly wonderful people and doing a, a somewhat thankless job that doesn't at this time show any signs of letting up uh thank you everybody for participating and uh thank you all everyone for watching uh, again if you have any questions reach out to everybody i will put everyone's contact information up on the board and until next time stay in your life